Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And I'm Ernie. Now, you got three generations here working again on the solar trailer. I'm so excited. You remember the last episode, we got you to this point where we didn't really get any electricity coming out of the wall yet. And we thought, well, we need to show you how to do that part, right? So this is the Renogy Rego system. It's really easy plug and play kind of system. But when you get to the end of it, when you plugged all that stuff together, you got to get to this part of it, which looks kind of scary. If this is scary to you, you don't have to do it. You can hire a licensed electrician. But if you want to see how it's done, or maybe you want to try it yourself, again, disclaimer, don't try this at home if you don't know what you're doing and follow local codes. But we're going to show you today how to take the Rego system and hook it up to your trailer wall. Thank you to Vessi for sponsoring this episode. The weather here is always changing. Right now, we are dealing with snow and slush, and soon, spring rain will make outside a mess. Thanks to our Vessis, we don't really have to worry that much about what shoes to wear when we head outside to do our latest reviews or just running errands. Vessis are 100% waterproof, great for unpredictable weather. Vessi shoes are made from Dymatex, a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. The material doesn't feel like it should be waterproof, but it is. And my Vessi tennis shoes are comfortable and stylish, so I can wear them every day. They're comfortable and breathable, a great investment to wear all year long. We also love that Vessis are 100% vegan, with each pair made with 30% less water, 600% less energy consumption, and less material trim waste by 97% in comparison to conventional practices. So we feel even better about wearing these tennis shoes. Vessis are the perfect gift to yourself or someone else. Check them out at Vessi.com slash now you know. Get the style and size you want using our code now you know for 15% off your entire order. Now, this is not pretty. This is not how we actually would do it. Uh, we just did this for kind of quick sake, but we wanted to show you how we're going to go from the inverter to a sub panel. So I brought in the big guns today to show us how to do that. All right, what do we do next, guys? Last time we did the MPPT solar controller, which is how we connected up uh, the solar panels mm -hmm. to the system through the MPPT charge controller, which charges the battery of the system. Now we're going to be taking power out of the battery. It's going to go to what's called an inverter, which it you know, does exactly what it says. It just turns the electricity upside down. Um, no, I'm just kidding. What it's going to do is it's going to convert um, the 12 volt DC current that we get from the battery and convert it into 120 volts AC that you would find in your normal house outlet if you live here in North America. So we can kind of pretend that it's a nighttime if we want, right? The solar panels, we took them in, but if even if they were on the roof, they would have stored the energy all day in that battery yep. and we would still be able to do stuff in the RV. Yes. And so the, the great part about the Rego system is that it is so plug and play. Everything is handled with nice big Anderson connectors that all go into one junction box. The problem is, since you're going to need to plug normal stuff in, household appliance kind of stuff, you need household electricity. And that's where it goes from the Rego system to the 19... 20s and 30s system of electricity that we have in North America. And the thing is, they couldn't have done this for you because every RV is going to be different. You're going to want to wire it differently. So today we're going to show you how to do just the simple sub panel to an electrical outlet so we can plug in like a light bulb or something like that and show you how it's done. All right, so we've got the battery down there. It's full of juice. We got this inverter. What else do we need to do and how do we get it to the wall? All right, so first of all, you need to get the 12 volts of DC current um, to the inverter itself. And the Rego system has provided this <laughs> extraordinarily chonky cable. This is really thick because it's running 12 volts, and that means that the amperage needs to be very high. And so you may notice that the, the other wires that we're gonna be dealing with today, while they are uh, 10 gauge, they don't necessarily need to be as thick because the voltage will be higher and the amperage will be lower, um, such as the magic of uh, V equals IR. So the nice part is connecting this inverter to the battery is as simple as connecting the battery to the connector box and then connecting the connector box to your inverter, just like that using the Anderson connector. We're gonna hold off on that because we need to do the wiring to the sub panel and then the sub panel to the outlet. All right, so Ernie, walk us through, um, what are we doing here? What's, what's this part? This is the output, alternating current output to, um, to, to the sub panel that will then go to the outlet in the wall. Okay. And there are three wires. One is ground. This is the ground wire. Okay. And the ground is, it's the absolute sort of base of everything. It's even in including the metal of the trailer. Okay. So this is our ground. Okay. It's green. Now, one of the terminals is called line, and the line will be the hot 
and the and this case because of the cable we're using that would be the red okay and what are you doing here why don't you have to use screws or anything why are you able they to they provided just... this really handy friction connector so you stick the wire in and then pull this down and snap it into place oh nice so it's easy wire. to do and undo right and then the last terminal is called neutral n and in our case the neutral will be the black wire. Normally this would be white? Often it would be black would be the line and white would be the neutral. In our case, um, red is the line and black is the neutral. And that seems to be good. Okay, and one thing to point out is remember to run your wires through this first because you can't do it later. Um, and that way this will all go together. So the other interesting thing about this inverter is it not only does um, power from the battery to an output, it can also take uh, shore power. What's meaning shore power? Plugging into like somebody's house. Okay. You can charge the battery using the same inverter. It just does it backwards, basically. Oh, so you could show up at uh, grandma's house and plug in during the night to charge up your system. Exactly. So you could have an extension cord. And when you do have shore power, you could have it hooked up. And it's the same connections right here, neutral line and ground, except that this time it would be for input. And basically you would wire up that to a plug, which then you would plug into something and it would be how you would charge the battery system. Now the Rego system, there's three different ways to charge the battery. One is from the solar, obviously. The other one is from onshore power, like we just talked about. And the other system, which I don't think we're gonna cover uh, today, is going to be a 12 volt in that could come from basically the alternator of your gas powered RV right. or energy in from say like a wind turbine or something if it was at 12 right. volts. Any 12 volt source. Right. right. But I think between solar and onshore power, that's gonna be um, a really big deal. Um, the 12 volt system would be good for an RV, but here we are in a trailer that's gonna be pulled by an electric truck. So I don't think we're gonna be worried too much about that. Now, while you're screwing this in, I wanted to ask breakers. I know in my home system, a lot of times if you do something dumb, the breaker blows. Yes. Are we relying on the breaker in the sub panel? Is there any other breakers in the system? Yeah, so we are gonna have uh, breakers in the sub panel. Um, and that is going to act like a breaker in your house. If you do something dumb or if you pull too much load, um, the breaker should break here. Now, normally in a main panel of your house, you'd have a main breaker, um, which could trip if something was going very, very wrong. So in this case, we have breakers right on the inverter here. Um, and what is that breaker rated at? Do you know, is it a 30 amp? 30 amp, yeah. Oh, and so that's why we're running 10 gauge wire. Yeah, you have charger input protect and then output protect. So two separate breakers um, for both of the functions that this inverter can do. Okay. So we've got the wiring hook up to the sub panel. What's the next step? The next step would be to get the uh, breakers hooked up in, in the sub panel and then coming out to our outlet. And which... so that's our outlet there for now. Yes. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do it. All right. We have to route this wire. This would be the ground. Okay. And the neutral. So let's see. Let's keep this at the ground. Okay. We decided that black would be neutral. Is that correct? That is correct. That's the neutral. That's the, the neutral. That's the ground neutral. This is the ground. Okay. And that's going to go into the ground lug of the panel. Right. And then this is the hot. Okay. Which is going to be enough. Pull a little through if we need to. Probably. Okay, so that's wired up. This is a 15 amp breaker. Okay. And because this is not a 220 system, but a 110, only half of the breaker will be working. Half of the breakers will be working. Oh, because there's nothing connected to right. this We uh, could bus connect bar. these two together, which mm -hmm. we would do normally, but we don't need to because we're just doing a For demonstration. Today. Okay. So theoretically. But if you wanted more circuits, you'd basically- right. we could get six circuits from this. I see. Even at a 110 system. Because normally there'd be two lines in a circuit breaker, like in your house, right. because you get two opposite phased 120s. Right. But in this case, you're getting one phase from the inverter. Okay. Okay, so we're going to the ground lug of our box. It'd be good if I loosened it the right direction. Okay. And that's going to feed directly to our neutral. Correct. Okay. I'm going to tie the ground and the neutral together. 
It has to happen at the beginning of the system. Well, normally this would be a 10 gauge or actually a 12 would suffice, but one, one size smaller. But Today for, for demonstration, we're using a, a 14. So the, this is pretty much set up. Okay. And now we have to uh, connect something to the breaker that will demonstrate that it's working. Okay, so you've wired up to the sub panel. Now you're going from the breaker to an outlet. Yes. If you follow the path of electricity, let's assume that the Anderson connector was plugged into the connector box. Um, that brings the DC power to the inverter. Uh, assuming the, the inverter was on, the inverter would be bringing 120 volts AC into the sub panel, and then it would go to this breaker. Then we're going to wire from the breaker um, to our uh, outlet box here, which we have the outlet for. And we even have the outlet cover because we're very fancy. And then we're going to um, plug in something to show that it works. There you go. And once it goes through, it's really hard to back it out, if not impossible. There. Okay. So we have a copper color, brass and chrome. Okay. The brass would be the hot. Okay. Which now because we back to conventional wiring mm -hmm. will be hot would be would be the black okay so now we're stripping the wires on the end of here now we're going to need to wire them to the breaker we're taking the white which is um the neutral and we're putting it on the neutral bar and putting it on the neutral bar. There's plenty of spaces, of course. And so when you're picking the sub panel for your project, you'd want to think about how many circuits you have, you know, all the things you want to power. And you probably want to stick to as small as possible for size, but maybe leave yourself a little bit of room to grow in case you add something later. Yeah, and I mean, you got to keep in mind that this inverter is only capable of doing 3000 watts at a time. So that's uh, should be around 20 amps of uh, AC, you know, house current. So you're not really going to be able to run like a big space heater and also a computer and also a fan and also a cooktop all at the same time. Now the breakers will take care of that if you have too many circuits, they'll blow or the main breaker will blow. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind is you do, if you're putting this in an RV, say, you'd want to size the panel to be helpful without being uh, too much of an energy hog. So normally when you're in a circuit box in a panel like this, you don't have the luxury of touching everything. <laughs> Things might be alive, depending right. on whether you can kill the entire house. It's always a good idea to shut it all off if you can. And the cool part about breakers is that they just clip on like that. Right, and this one of course is a is one of the live circuits because mm -hmm. it's connected to the lug that we hooked up. I see. Okay, so we can put the cover on. Clipped for now. Okay, so now we have the cover on. And the breaker, breaker's off. So we can start hooking up the okay. rest of the system. So I think all we're gonna need to do is hook up the Anderson connector and turn on the battery. Okay. Simple so as that. Let's make sure everything's sort of off. Yep. Plug it all together and then come down the line, turning things on and see what happens. So now we're gonna use this nice Anderson connector um, with these big honking cables. I'm gonna hook it into the connector box. It takes a little bit of force, but not too crazy. So then that goes to the inverter. The inverter goes to the sub panel and the sub panel goes to the outlet and the outlet goes to the light. <laughs> so if everything works, I'm gonna turn the battery on here. Yep, starting. It has a little boot up sequence. And then it tells you your battery level and we're at 25 to 50%. Um, it's managed excellently, by the way. We had some days where it got down to negative nine degrees Fahrenheit um, and it was just sitting out here getting cold. Um, I don't even think it's fully warmed up from then. So pretty amazing that it even turns on. <laughs> so next we're gonna wanna turn on the inverter. It has a little toggle switch right here. The lights turned on, so that's a good sign. That beeping doesn't sound too good. And now it's giving us an output of 119 volts. 
We're not getting any input voltage. That would have been from the house and that's because we don't have anything hooked up to it. So in theory, we should be able to turn on this breaker and then I should be able to turn on our lamp. Moment of truth. Hey. So it's working and this is really, really cool because this doesn't have to just be a lamp. Um, we could be pulling quite a bit more current. It could be going up to something like a space heater. In fact, we have a space heater. Should we try it? Sure. All right. Cause you know, a lamp with an LED light in it isn't much of a load. I'm gonna start it in off position. We're gonna plug it in just like it's a normal everyday appliance in your house. Even though right now this trailer is not attached to any shore power at all. All right, so it's still giving us that. I'm gonna turn it on to low. That should be 500 watts. The light has turned on. It's gonna be a while till this right. see fully it, heats see, up. Does it tell you what it's drawing? It's still holding at 119 volts. Uh, well, should I try these the buttons? The light didn't dim. Turn it up to high. Let's see. Right. I mean, theoretically, it's... So now that's medium. That's a, around 1,000 watts. Now you can hear the fan clicked on when I switched it into high, which is drawing about 1,500 watts. That's about half the power that this can put out. All right. And in general, you probably wouldn't be drawing more than that. I mean, in yeah. general, maybe occasionally, but... So, I mean, this is... We were running lights and heat off of a battery pack that size that has been sitting in the freezing frigid cold for weeks now. It hadn't lost any uh, power, which I'm very impressed with. And it's all running through this inverter, which is able to put out enough power to power this, probably another one of these uh, at max draw. I'm really impressed. And the whole system is really, really plug and play. Again, the most complicated part, sadly enough, is the normal electricity stuff. <laughs> that you uh, normally have to pay an electrician for in your house. Everything else is more plug and play than that. And I think that that's really awesome. Is the heater warm? Yeah. Oh, I can start. Wow. Wow. <laughs> start to feel it right in the center. Yep. Woo. I just pulled up the Renergy app here on the phone and it's nice because it gives you a more accurate uh, percentage of your battery. We're at 34% um, and dropping. It's currently pulling 147 amps at 12 volts. So these cables that you see right here have 140 amps going through them. See if they're warming up. Which is pretty amazing. Nope. Nice and cold because they're yep. well sized for this application. I'm, I'm really impressed. It's so nice to be able to see this. The average temperature of the, of the battery is uh, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's working in really, really poor conditions. You can imagine if we left the space heater on for a while and it was allowed to heat up, um, it would be doing even better. Um, but I mean, I'm really, really impressed that it's, that it's doing such a good job at keeping everything on. This is really exciting. Again, you could, you could add some more uh, circuits to this. You could wire up in your trailer or RV um, a whole system just like your house um, and be running regular appliances off of that while being completely off grid. And I think that that is really cool. The other cool part about this inverter is that not only can you get power from the battery, you can actually charge the battery using the inverter. So coming out of this gland here, you could basically wire in another three wire system, which would go to a regular wall outlet. And you could plug in your trailer or RV, just like it was a laptop into your house. And so basically instead of it inverting power from the 12 volts to the 120 and taking the 120 and putting it into the inverter, it would take the onshore power from wherever you had plugged in and to run everything inside the house or inside the trailer or RV. But then as soon as you unplugged it, it would switch back to inverting it uh, out from the battery. Right. So everything would run through your panel, which is much more convenient than trying to unplug everything and plug it into an extension cord you brought in from the house. Yeah. So that's actually a nice feature. So I am really impressed with the Rego system. It is such a nice plug and play system for a small trailer or RV. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, you can use our affiliate code down below. Thank you so much for watching. Now you know.